This video is covering the internal structure of the leaf and will include stomatal opening and closing. So to begin with, let's look at the external structure of the leaf. We know all about that from the previous video when we were looking at plant structure. So we know that the leaf is a thin, flat lamina, and that's really important because being thin enables gases to get in and out, to diffuse in and out very quickly. And being flat means that it's really well adapted to absorbing all of that light energy to maximize photosynthesis. So in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the internal structure, a vertical section of the leaf. This is a diagram of the internal structure of the leaf and this is an important diagram. You could be asked to draw it or to label it, so it's worth learning. As always with all plant diagrams, always mark in your three tissue types, dermal, ground and vascular, and that's the best place to start. The dermal tissue is present towards the outer parts of the leaf. It's known as the epidermis in the leaf and there's a layer of epidermal cells to the top of the leaf and to the bottom of the leaf. The epidermal cells on the upper surface secrete this waxy substance known as a cuticle and this cuticle layer is there to prevent excess water loss. Remember, the function of dermal tissue is for protection. The ground tissue makes up the bulk of the plant and it's divided into two layers within the leaf, the palisade mesophyll layer and the spongy mesophyll layer. The palisade mesophyll layer itself contain many chloroplasts, much more than in the spongy mesophyll layer. This is because these cells are near to the surface of the leaf and this is where the light hits the leaf. So there's going to be a lot of photosynthesis happening in those cells because they contain all of those chloroplasts and that's an important adaptation of the leaf. Also, when you look at the spongy mesophyll layer, you can see many spaces between those irregular shaped cells. This is to ensure for the rapid diffusion of gases, gases that are essential to photosynthesis. For example, carbon dioxide needs to get to those cells and oxygen needs to be released. Then there's the vascular tissue, the xylem, which is transporting the water upwards into the leaf and the phloem, which is transporting the food made in the leaf downwards through the plant. When you look at the surface of the leaf, you see all of those veins and those veins are the vascular tissue. They're composed of vascular tissue. When you look at the internal structure of the leaf, you can see that the vascular tissue is made up of a vascular bundle. And in the vascular bundle, xylem is to the top and phloem is to the bottom. Leaves have these openings mostly found on the undersurface of the leaf and these are called stomata. Stomata are openings for gas exchange. Carbon dioxide is going to enter the leaf through the stomata and oxygen and water vapour is going to exit the leaf through the stomata. So on the undersurface of the leaf in particular, there are many of these holes, these openings for gas exchange, these stomata. When we look at one stoma here in the picture, we can see that each one is surrounded by a pair of guard cells. And these guard cells are responsible for opening the hole or allowing things in or closing it up. And it all depends on whether or not these guard cells are turgid or flaccid. Stomata open when the pair of guard cells surrounding each one takes in water by means of osmosis. So water enters the guard cells by means of osmosis. They swell, they become very turgid and they buckle outwards towards the side. This opens the stoma. When the stomata are closed, it's because the guard cells have lost water by osmosis. They're no longer turgid, they're flaccid and this closes over the stoma. What makes the stomata open and close? One factor is the amount of carbon dioxide inside the leaf. If there is a high concentration of carbon dioxide inside the leaf, the stomata close. And this is generally why the stomata are closed at night. There's no photosynthesis going on, but there is a lot of cells respiring. These are giving out carbon dioxide. This is building up inside the leaf and so the stomata are closed. The stomata are open during daylight hours. This is because when there is light, there is photosynthesis and this is using up the carbon dioxide inside the leaf. And so the stomata must open to allow more carbon dioxide to enter. Carbon dioxide is not the only factor that controls stomatal opening and closing. The stomata will also close when there is extremes of temperature. As well as that, light plays a role as well. It's a complex process. To summarise, if we are drawing or labelling the internal structure of the leaf, we have to mark in the three tissue types, dermal, ground and vascular. The dermal tissue consists of the upper and lower epidermis. The epidermal cells, particularly on the upper epidermis, secrete a waxy cuticle layer and this prevents excess water loss from the upper surface of the plant. The ground tissue is made up of the palisade and spongy mesophyll layers. The palisade mesophyll cells nearest to the surface of the leaf contain many chlorophyll 
chloroplasts, and this maximizes photosynthesis. The spongy mesophyll cells, they have many air spaces in between them, and this allows for rapid gas exchange. The vascular tissue is the xylem bringing the water into the leaf and the phloem transporting the food out of the leaf. The stomata are mostly on the undersurface of the leaf and their openings for gas exchange. And we know all about the guard cells and how they function to open and close the stomata. Internal leaf concentration of carbon dioxide is a factor that can affect stomatal opening. So good luck with all of the revision. Make sure you're using your textbook and you're doing past papers.